In this video, I want to talk about one of the major benefits of random effects estimation in that it allows us to estimate the effect of variables which are constant through time on a dependent variable. So the example which I'm going to be using here is the same one which we've used throughout the panel modeling discussion, which is investigating the various factors which influence a house price in a city I at a time period T. And as before, we assume that this is equal to beta naught plus beta one times the crime rate in that city I at time period T plus beta two times the unemployment rate in that city I at that time period T. But now what we do with this particular random effects estimation is that we can include our measures of variables which are themselves constant through time. So I'm including a variable geography which doesn't really vary through time for each individual city. So there's no time subscript on this particular term here. I'm also going to include a measure of the ethnic fractionalization within that city, which similarly to geography is not going to vary through time. There's a slight difference between geography and race in that geography is exactly constant, whereas race will be slowly moving through time. So they're both at least approximately constant through time. And then finally, we just have left over our composite error eta it, where we just remember that eta it is equal to alpha i. So alpha i here is the remaining factors other than geography and race, which are specific to each particular city. And then we have our idiosyncratic error, UIT. Okay, so why can we necessarily estimate the effect of geography and race on house prices when we couldn't do it before using fixed effects or first differences estimation? Well, to see this, what we're going to do first of all is we're actually going to transform the system using the random effects transform. And I'm going to assume that we know the parameter lambda just for ease, but it doesn't change anything about what I'm about to do. You could use the estimate of the parameter lambda, so you'd use lambda hat there. So all we do is we take the original house price for city i at time t, and then we take off the time mean of the house price times this parameter lambda. And seeing as I've done that to the left hand side, I need to do it to the right hand side as well, so I get beta naught times one minus lambda, plus now we get beta one times the crime rate in city i at time t, minus the time average level of crime rate, and then I get plus beta two times the unemployment rate in city i at time t, minus the unemployment rate which has been averaged across time. Okay, so there's no change there up until now, until what we did before. But when we come to the first time constant factor, there is gonna be a slight difference. Because geography doesn't vary through time, what we're actually gonna be taking off is we're gonna be taking off lambda times the geography for that particular city at time i, because the time mean of geography is just geography with the subscript i. It's time is mean is just itself. And I've just realized that in both of these expressions for crime and for unemployment, we need to have a lambda in there as well. And then finally, what we need is, uh, or penultimate expression rather, we're gonna have race i minus lambda times the time mean of race, which is just gonna be race i. And then finally, we're gonna have eta i t minus lambda times eta i bar. Okay, so we've got this relatively complicated looking expression here, but what it is actually telling us is quite simple. In general, lambda lies between naught and one. And because of the fact it lies between naught and one, the terms which are having time constant factors, which are geography and race, actually aren't going to disappear. They'd only disappear if lambda is equal to one, right? If lambda is equal to one, I'd just have geography minus geography and race minus race. So I wouldn't be able to estimate their effect, which is the problem we have in fixed effects estimation. 
But seeing here is the fact that lambda is not equal to 1, we are actually going to be able to estimate the effect of these time constant factors on house prices. And if the same conditions are satisfied, which we talk, spoke about in the last video, then the random effects estimates of beta 3 and the random, estimate, uh, random effects estimate of beta 4 are both going to be consistent. So as m tends to infinity and t is fixed, we have a convergence of our estimate, uh, estimator to those particular parameter values. So just to reiterate, this is a really major benefit of doing random effects estimation in that it allows you to estimate the effect of variables which are themselves time constant. But remember, in all of this discussion which we've undertaken so far, in order to estimate random effects models, we've had to assume that the covariance between alpha i and x i t is equal to zero. And frequently, that isn't going to be the case. There's going to be really a minority of cases whereby we can use random effects because it's safe to assume that the covariance between this unobserved factor alpha i and any of our independent variables is equal to zero.